In this video, we're looking at the second big section in Ecclesiastes. This is the biggest textual unit that we'll look at in our journey through this book of Ecclesiastes. The sermon I preached from this section I called, If Only I Could Find Meaning. The meaning of life is what is in view in this uh, big textual unit. Now, as always, I encourage you to take the time to dig through this section, read it and reread it a few times, and then spend some time praying, asking God to open your eyes to help you to understand His truth to us. And then I'll just help us see some of the structure and the repeated words, the key ideas that uh, Mr. Teacher wants us to see in this section. And as you heard, I, I'm going to call uh, the writer of the book, Mr. Teacher. I explained this a bit more in the previous video. And we can see a, a whole lot of focus on him and his search for meaning in life under the sun. Now, something that is very important to just notice here is that he is performing this pursuit to try and find meaning in life from a very, very uh, egocentric way as he begins this uh, pursuit. He does mention God up the top here, but he says what a heavy burden God has laid on mankind. And only when we get to the final few verses do we see that he actually turns to God as the one who will ultimately give meaning to life under the sun. But before we dig into those verses that give us the answer, let's just look at some of the other repetitions. So another key idea that we see in um, this book is the, the repetition of under the heavens or under the sun. The more common one is under the sun. Uh, but in this passage, he, he mentions under the heavens a couple of times. And what this is showing us is that he is uh, trying to make sense of life on a horizontal level. He's looking at life here on planet Earth under the sun and seeing if he can find meaning to the rhyme and reason of things. A new phrase is introduced that we didn't see in the first passage, this idea of chasing the wind. Now this phrase is only used in the first half of Ecclesiastes, so after chapter 6 we won't see this phrase again. Uh, but it's used a number of times uh, in this opening section where it is introduced. Now, this word for chasing is only used in the book of Ecclesiastes um, in the whole Bible. And the, the sense of the word also has the idea of I'm herding, trying to herd the wind, uh, which if you've ever tried to uh, herd anything, Herding any animals is difficult. Herding the wind is impossible. And that's kind of the sense that he's giving us. And then this very important uh, word that we've seen in the previous section, uh, meaningless. So uh, that's enigmatic, impossible to fully get our minds around. We see a number of times he links these concepts together under the sun, meaningless and chasing the wind. Um, we see them grouped together a few times uh, in this section. To help us with the structure, we see uh, that he, he uses these types of phrases, I said to myself, I said to myself, then I said to myself. Another word or concept that's used a lot in this book is the idea of wisdom. That specific word is used 25 times um, in the book as a whole. And here we see a whole lot about uh, wisdom and knowledge. And in this section, uh, wisdom is uh, compared with madness or folly a few times. In the beginning of chapter 2, he's trying to find meaning um, in pleasure, various forms of pleasure, 
things in which his heart can take delight. By the end, we see that there is something in which true enjoyment um, or joy or pleasure, uh, happiness can actually be found. Here in verse 3, um, he actually states his purpose, and this purpose really uh, carries us through the first half of the book. So all the way up to uh, chapter 6, verse 9. Uh, so from here, 1 verse 12, all the way up to chapter 6, verse 9. This is the key question that he's looking at. I wanted to see what was good for people to do. So he's looking for the good. We see it again. Same word is here, what pleases him. What pleases him. So we're going to be given an answer. What is good? Another important word is this word labor or toil that we'll see throughout the book. It joins them toilsome labor. People have not toiled. So he's seeking to find meaning in life. Um, just looking at the structure of I said to myself, in this first section he's he's looking for meaning in wisdom. In this section. He's looking for meaning and pleasure. The then, yeah, says then I turn my thoughts. So it's a change. He's trying uh, something else. And all the way up to verse 18 here, uh, he's just trying to compare uh, wisdom and folly, which is better. Is it better to be a fool or better to be wise? And then he's seeing, well, is meaning found in possessions? And over and over again, the answer is given. Can I find meaning in wisdom? No. More wisdom, more sorrow, more knowledge, more grief. And I think that's a common experience of life. As we grow older and understand more about life under the sun, we actually see how much is wrong with life under the sun. And it actually grows our sorrow and grows our grief. And so then he tries something different. He tries pleasure. Uh, so he tries laughter and embracing himself with wine, trying to just find the good life. Then he tries to build a whole lot and create uh, a world around him to really take pleasure in, um, amassing uh, more and more houses and more and more gold and silver, uh, getting the latest male and female singers and a harem as well. So he tries uh, sex and enjoyment and just building up a palace around himself. But then, as this ended with this proverb, so this ends with a proverb type statement, yet when I surveyed all my hands had done and what I toiled to achieve, everything was meaningless. The chasing after the wind, nothing was gained. So the wisdom test failed. He couldn't find meaning through wisdom. He couldn't find meaning in life under the sun through pleasure. He does get to the point here of saying that wisdom is better than folly. Just as light is better than darkness, which is this repetition of darkness. But then he says the same fate overtakes them all. And he reflects on the reality that the fool like the wise must die. And the reality of death really uh, causes him to get to a point of despair. Because even as he considers, he's amassed all these possessions and he's tried to see if he can find meaning in them. But then he says, actually, uh, my heart began to despair because even with all that he had t toiled for, he needs to hand it over to someone else. Uh, this idea of just his heart um, is also a repeated theme. Uh, when he says, then I said to myself, it's actually, I said to my heart, uh, this word is also heart. It's all the same. I said to my heart. Um, this is actually I, my heart experienced. I said to my heart. I said to my heart. My heart took delight. Um, this is the strivings of the heart. Even in their hearts, they do not rest. It's also a repeated theme we'll see throughout this book of Ecclesiastes that he, in his heart of hearts, he's trying to find meaning, but he's just struggling to find it. He can't find it in wisdom or pleasure or possessions. 
and really by the end of this section he is absolutely in the pits of despair. I hated life. Um, uh, my heart began to despair because he realizes that he is going to die and after he dies everything he's worked for is going to be given to somebody else and he doesn't know if that somebody else will be wise or foolish. He doesn't know what they'll do with all that he has uh, toiled to achieve. And so he uses these, I hated life, uh, I'm despairing, he's in grief and pain, his heart can't rest, and it's all just meaningless. Thankfully though, that's not the end of the story, and we get to verse 24 here, where we get the first of what are known as uh, the carpe diem uh, passages in Ecclesiastes, uh, which means uh, seize the day. And this is a call now, after trying to find meaning in all of these things, he's saying actually a person can do nothing better. And that's a phrase we're going to see a number of times. Uh, you can do nothing better than to eat, drink and find satisfaction in your own toil. But the vital thing to help us understand that this isn't just a fatalism, just going and trying to make the most of life under the sun, it's actually, I see that this is from the hand of God. For without Him, who can eat or find enjoyment? To the person who pleases Him, God gives wisdom, knowledge, and happiness. So what we see here is that God is the one who makes all the difference. And Mr. Teacher is eventually saying that he found that there is meaning in life, but that meaning is only found in God. And when you find meaning in God, he then gives wisdom, knowledge, and joy. See, the amazing thing is when you find true meaning in God, he gives. He gives wisdom. That's what they were looking for. Wisdom and knowledge and true happiness in the things of this life. Uh, God enables us to eat and drink the daily gifts that God gives to actually enjoy them. God enables us to find satisfaction in our toil under the sun. So by the end of this, when he's been trying to find meaning in life under the sun, it's been like chasing the wind. He just can't get any satisfaction. Uh, wisdom isn't working. Pleasure isn't working. Possessions aren't working. Because if you try and find meaning in those things, you will fail. But if you find the meaning of life in God, then God actually enables you to enjoy all of these things as gifts from Him, gifts that He wants us to enjoy in this life under the sun. And this turns a life from being a life of despair, a life that feels wearisome, to actually being a life of wonder, enjoying these gifts from God. It turns a meaningless life into a meaningful life. But only when you find that the meaning of life is found in God. Then he enables us to enjoy all the other things, all the other gifts of this life under the sun. Now we're going to see seven of these carpe diem statements throughout the book of Ecclesiastes. And they will help us to understand how to make sense of the enigmatic nature of life under the sun. It is hard for us to get our, life, our heads around. It will at times feel like we're chasing after the wind. But when you truly find your meaning in God, He changes our whole perspective so that we can eat and drink and find satisfaction in our day-to-day -day toil, enjoying the daily gifts that God gives us when we find our meaning in Him. And for us as Christians, uh, this is even more true because... King Jesus came to live under the sun and in John 10 verse 10 he says that he came so that people might have life and have it to the full, full life, true life. And then Paul says in 1 Corinthians 10 verse 31 uh, that whether we eat or drink or whatever we do, we are to do it all for the glory of God. 
See, Jesus came to give us life to the full. True meaning is found in Jesus. And then when we do all of these things in life under the sun, eating, drinking, whatever you find to do for the glory of God, because you've found meaning in God, he will enable you to enjoy all of these things, to enjoy the wisdom he gives, to enjoy the pleasures of this life and the possessions that he gives us, to enjoy them in a way that brings glory to him. Not trying to find meaning in them, because we've found meaning in Jesus. And so as you dig further into this passage, it is a glorious passage, a passage that should shape the way that we live life under the sun, wanting to live in pursuit of God, having found our meaning in him, wanting to please him, living for the glory of him. Well, God bless as you dig in further.